Yes, welcome back everybody to Altcoin Daily. My name's Austin. In today's video, I wanna talk about the strength we are seeing in Bitcoin and the wider crypto market. And by the way, I am not a registered financial advisor, nor can I see the future. This channel has always just been about me sharing my journey, what I'm doing, so make your own decisions. But in today's video, let's talk about where we stand through a series of charts, as well as on-chain data to see where this market is trending next. So like always, check the timestamps down below in the video description, hit the like button right now, and let's jump in starting with Bitcoin. This is BTC on the weekly scale. And as we can see, for the first time in over a month, Bitcoin has reclaimed the very important 200 week moving average. Now, keep in mind, we still have probably three, four more days until this closes, so anything could happen, but a very positive sign thus far. And why is this important? Well, throughout Bitcoin's history, over and over and over again, this has acted as strong historical support for BTC. In fact, as early as 2014, 2015, again in 2019 and 2020, even though on occasion we have dipped below, like right now, that has always signaled in retrospect a great time to buy because we've never stayed under for long. Now, will it hold? Time will tell. I will keep you updated. But just to be realistic, we may see something like this over the next few weeks. And essentially what this is showing us, our next big support level would be around the $29,000, $30,000 level, which was one support now acts as resistance for that next level up. Is a $30,000 Bitcoin in these next few weeks possible? Well, a lot of the on-chain data signals yes. Realized losses might prove Bitcoin's gain if signaling a market bottom. And again, I always want to keep this channel realistic as best we can. This does not mean an overall market bottom, maybe later this year as the Fed continues to raise rates. We could go lower, anything is possible, or this could be the ultimate bottom. But either way, the point is the on-chain data is signaling at least a local bottom for now. The on-chain data supports it. We saw the same signal at the end of the 2012 bear market, same as the end of the 2015 bear market, same signal as the end of the 2018 bear market, and we're seeing it again now. So let's talk about what are realized losses and what that tells us about the market. Signs of seller exhaustion are creating conditions that resemble a market bottom for Bitcoin. Realized losses, or the losses incurred by selling assets, show the extent of investor capitulation. And we can see all this because the blockchain data is public. So let's go over realized cap hodl wave and just pay attention to the colors over the years, specifically the difference between the lighter yellows, the short term hodlers anywhere from three to six, six to 12 months, or one to two years short term hodlers, and the longer hodlers in the darker colors. And what do you notice? Well, starting in 2011, all the way to 2022 today, we can see any time the market started to fill up with longer term hodlers, these darker colors, darker colors, this signified an end of a bear market and a nice launch pad for the bull market. End of a bear market, launch pad for a bull market. And why is that? Let's talk about it. Well, as retail and short term investors are purged from the market during these massive sell offs, the saturation of hodlers, meaning people holding for the long term, swells. The more hodlers there are, the stabler crypto prices become, and the likelier it is that the market has bottomed. And we're starting to see that now, those short term hodlers over these last several months getting purged from the market, leaving the long term people. Right now, over 80% of the US dollar wealth stored in Bitcoin is now older than three months signaling the sell-off waves in May and June have exhausted nearly all short-term traders. This percentage, 80%, coincides with data from the end of 2012, 2015, and 2018 bear market bottoms, which all occurred when the USD wealth older than three months climbed above 80%, like now. This is such a positive sign. If you hold Bitcoin, I had to share this with you. Now, just looking at the last two cycles this happened, this does not mean we're in full bull market territory yet. For example, 
when we saw this data at the end of the 2015 bear, right around here. Man, we rallied for the next several weeks and then a huge drop, a little summer rally. When this happened at the end of 2018, man, we kept climbing higher for weeks and weeks and then dropped down back in bear for the next few months. So what this means to you is I would still be careful. Summer rallies are not new. In fact, we've seen them over and over again. So this is Bitcoin. And if we look at the chart and set it to one year, let's just go back to 2020. This is not the biggest example, but still stands. We had a nice little summer rally at the end of July in 2020, stayed up for a few weeks, and then dropped back down to almost where we started for the summer. Looking at 2019, started the year very quiet, then around May, June, and July, rallied hard, and then corrected into the fall. Looking at 2018, this was the first year of the bear market after the 20K Bitcoin in 2017. And even though we had dead cat bounced, dead cat bounced again, people thought this was a summer rally to change things, but in fact, lasted a few weeks and then continued to correct because we were in bear. Now, I'm not going to you know bore you. You can go back yourself and see other years however big or small they are, we historically have gotten a summer rally and then corrected into the fall. The only question is, will we end bull or will we end bear? Give me your thoughts on this down below. Seriously, I would love to hear your take. Let's all check the comment section together. Now, something interesting to note, and also something we talked about months ago on this channel, is BTC dominance is continuing to rise slowly. And the reason I think that is, is because as some of these altcoins continue to, you know, follow Bitcoin and maybe make some of the gains, I think people are honestly going to use that as a reason to maybe get out of their more speculative alts to less risky plays like cash, like Bitcoin, etc. So what that means to me is my original strategy at the start of this year hasn't changed but there are aspects that I'm learning, that I'm growing as I get new information. For example, I am very heavy Bitcoin. I'm also very heavy stablecoin right now. I still hold my Ethereum. I still have my bags of altcoins, but I've been exclusively DCAing into Bitcoin in 2022 based on my thesis of Bitcoin dominance. That's me. That's just what I'm doing. I could be totally wrong, but you know, I'm a more conservative, I would say, investor, less prone to risk. So I like these higher caps especially in a bear market, or at least especially before we confirm a bull market. Now, what's changed is ETH dominance, at least for now, at least today, is actually holding its own pretty well. Not so much against Bitcoin. Bitcoin is still the king, but against these other altcoins. A lot of people are moving their altcoins into Ethereum. I think that's in large part due to the merge for Ethereum happening in September. I had thought people would see that as a risk upgrade, right? It's a huge unknown upgrade happening to the entire network. And in a risk off environment, I thought, oh, that would make people less excited about ETH, but I was wrong. I've updated my opinion based on the data. People are clearly still excited. For example, case in point, we tweeted this out on our Twitter. There's a link down below. We tweeted this out yesterday. Justin, the anonymous owner of Amazon.eth, the NFT, declines a $1 million buyout offer. So somebody offered a million dollars to the owner of Amazon.eth and the owner rejected it. On Tuesday, the Ethereum name service, or ENS, domain Amazon.eth, received, received an offer for $1 million in USDC from an anonymous wallet address on OpenSea. The offer to buy the ENS domain went unanswered, however, and no transaction took place. This despite the last sale of the domain uh, from about five months ago for 33 Ethereum worth around $100,000 at that time. So five months ago, the owner bought this for around $100,000 and they could have sold yesterday for a million dollars. They chose not to. Risky play, but I guess they're happy with what they've got. So that is the video. My name's Austin. Like always, see you tomorrow. And if I was unclear on how my strategy changed, just to sum it all up, I am still actively DCAing into Bitcoin. 
I don't know if Bitcoin's going to end the year up, sideways, or down from where we are today, but it's still my belief that Bitcoin dominance will rise in this risk-off market. Ethereum may be one to take a look at as well up to September because it appears the excitement is still there. And even if I'm wrong, meaning Bitcoin never falls lower, we enter a new bull market and it's up only from here, I'd rather be a little late to the altcoin party than a little early. That's me as a risk adverse investor. And just as a sort of example and how this looks in real time, if you would for last cycle, if you would have waited until Bitcoin surpassed $20,000 at the end of 2020 before looking at alts, yeah, you wouldn't have got 100% of those altcoin gains, but you would have did fine. The altcoins really didn't even start to rally until Bitcoin surpassed $20,000. Anyway, let me know what you're doing down below. Like always, see you tomorrow.